Hello and welcome to Basics for Gamers presents The Basics of Crafting Part 3 for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. In the first part of the series we discussed the basic framework that all crafting follows, and in the previous course we took a closer look at crafting magical items and forging weapons and armor from special materials. Now in this video we're going to address a few of the remaining odds and ends, starting with formulas. We've previously discussed how common formulas can be purchased and uncommon formulas may be awarded by the GM as part of treasure, but there are a couple other ways that you can use to gain formulas, the first of those being through invention. The inventor feat is available starting at 7th level for those who have at least master proficiency in crafting. With this feat, a character can spend downtime to create their own formulas instead of buying them. The only real requirement worth mentioning is that the formula must be for a common rarity item. There are no other hard requirements, but I think a GM would be within their right to say that you can only create a formula for something that you can actually craft. For example, you would need the magical crafting feat to create the formula for a magic potion. Again, that is not a strict rules as written interpretation, but as a GM, I just think that that is logical. Also, crafting the formula works just like crafting anything else. You pay half the cost up front for that formula, and then spend four days working, and then you make a crafting skill check. If successful, you can either pay their balance, or spend another day of downtime working. When the balance is reduced to zero, then you have a new formula. The other way to gain new formulas is through reverse engineering. This works pretty much the same, but in reverse. Instead of creating a new item, you're taking apart an item you already have to see how it works, and then creating a formula to make that item through the knowledge gained by taking it apart. First, you spend four days disassembling and examining that item. This effectively destroys it and leaves you with raw materials worth 50% of the item's listed price. After this, you make a crafting skill check versus a DC set by the GM, and this DC should be the same DC that you would roll against to craft that item. If you succeed, you can craft the item's formula at the formula's full price, not half its price as is normal with crafting, because at this point you have not invested any money towards the project yet. The 50% value that you gain from disassembling the item that is money in your pocket at this point. Nothing's been invested towards creating the formula. And then from there, everything just works as normal. You can pay the remaining balance or spend another day of downtime working. When the balance reaches zero, then you have a formula for the original item. And then if you want, you can use the formula that you just created in order to recreate the item that you took apart using the raw materials that you were given when you disassembled it. Those raw materials again are 50%, so conveniently that's the amount of money that you'd have to put up to begin crafting it anyway. Although the book does not state that only common rarity items can be reverse engineered, crafting a formula like this is based on the formula's price. And at the time of this recording, formula prices are only available for common rarity items. But if the GM wishes to place a price on the formula for an uncommon or rare item, then this process theoretically could be used by players to gain harder to find formulas. Another interesting twist to crafting is that goblins can take the junk tinker feat to save a little bit of time or a little bit of money. This feat lets goblins craft level zero items other than armor and they make it out of whatever junk happens to be lying around. When doing so, the price of the item being crafted is reduced to one quarter of its normal price, but if successful, the result is always shoddy. For example, let's say such a goblin wanted to craft a battle axe. Battle axes normally cost one gold piece, which is the same as 10 silver pieces. But in this case, we would treat it as having one quarter that price, or two silver pieces and five copper. So the goblin crafter in this example would need to provide half of that up front, which would be one silver and three copper pieces, and after four days of work, 
would have a remaining balance of 1 silver, 3 copper. This does accelerate the crafting process, but the downside is, if successful, it only produces a shoddy quality battle axe. Shoddy items have half the regular item's hit points and half the usual break threshold. And normally, when you use a shoddy item to make an attack, or any other check with that item, you suffer a negative 2 penalty to that roll. But goblins with the junk tinker feet do not suffer that negative 2 penalty when using any shoddy items that they created. And last, it's worth mentioning that the crafting skill can be used to make more than just weapons and gear. The Game Mastery Guide points out that the crafting skill may be used to cut and polish raw gems into fine jewelry. The GM can provide unfinished gems as part of treasure. An unfinished gem is worth half of that gem's normal value and is then used as the regular 50% material cost that's required at the beginning of all crafting. So from there it just works as normal. The crafter would spend four days of work, followed by a crafting skill check, and then either paying off the balance or working until the remaining balance is reduced to zero, at which time you have a properly cut and finished gemstone that is worth its full price instead of the 50% that an unfinished gem is worth. And although we're stepping a little bit into house rule territory here, I think it's reasonable that the same process could apply to creating other works of art. Maybe a player wants to craft a golden crown as a gift to the local queen, or make an awe-inspiring holy symbol for their chosen deity. The process, in theory, would work the same, Determine the value of the item, provide half the cost up front, and spend four days of work and make a crafting skill check. Just make sure you also keep in mind there are minimum proficiency requirements, so you may need to assign an item level to the work of art being created, not just a price and value to it. And also you may need to enforce other requirements, such as requiring an amount of gems be included in the initial materials for creating a fancy crown. And stepping even further into house rule territory, you could even apply the same process to other skills. Maybe a bard wishes to write their masterpiece symphony. They could use, in theory, the performance skill in place of crafting, but it would work the same way. Pay 50% of the value up front, spend four days working, and then pay the remaining balance or continue lowering that balance with additional days of work. It might seem odd that you have to pay 500 gold pieces up front when writing a symphony that the GM valued at 1,000 gold pieces, but that could be explained away by the need to rent practice space or for hiring professional musicians to play and rehearse your music as you continue to listen to it and refine it until it is a finished symphony. Again, this is deeply within house rule territory, so use with caution. But the point that I want to get across here is to look outside the box and try to find ways that you can make crafting work beyond just building stuff for adventuring. In this video, we close out our series on crafting by covering a few odds and ends. In addition to purchasing formulas, there are a couple other means of gaining them. The first of those is through inventing the formula yourself. Inventor is a feat those with master proficiency can take starting at 7th level. With it, a character can craft any common rarity formula using the same process as crafting anything else. And the second method to gain more formulas is by reverse engineering. This allows a character to dismantle an object and study it until they figure out how it works and then they can write a formula for it. When a character reverse engineers an item, that item is destroyed, but the crafter is left with raw materials worth 50% of that item's listed price. Four days are spent working, followed by a crafting check against a DC set by the GM. If successful, the crafter can spend more days working to pay off the balance just like normal, except the remaining balance after four days of work starts at the full price of the formula, not half of it. And if the crafting check results in a critical failure, then 10% of the value of the salvage material is lost.
Goblins can also craft items a little bit quicker and relatively cheaper by using the Junk Tinker feat. This works like normal crafting, except the item's price is set at one quarter of its listed price and results in a shoddy item. Shoddy items have half the usual hit points and half the usual break threshold, and normally impose a negative 2 penalty to any checks made with that item, but goblins do not face that negative 2 penalty with shoddy items that they themselves created. And last, crafting can be used to cut and polish unfinished stones and turn them into finished gems. Unfinished gems have half the value of cut gems and are used as the initial materials needed for crafting the finished gem. And although not strictly permitted by the rules as written, some GMs might want to consider letting their players use this same framework for crafting other items like works of art, literature, paintings, and the like. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the Basics for Gamers Patreon community receive special benefits, like getting to vote on the topics that we cover in the future, and also they get to see these videos one week and ad-free before everybody else. Visit the link shown on the left of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more about becoming a patron. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release. And we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you soon with more Basics of Pathfinder.